Good evening, and welcome to my talk about positive psychology, the secrets to happiness. Positive psychology is a scientific study of what makes life worth living. It focuses on individuals who find life mediocre, find it okay, and it works out how we can make our lives better, how we can make the lives of those who are average way better. A lot of psychology focuses on mental health illnesses, or on people who are unwell, who don't enjoy life. But this area of research is really up and coming, and it's helping us really flourish. A couple years ago, I faced a difficult time, like many of us here have. I was anxious, I was sad, I was lonely, and I thought I would never get out of what I faced. Well, it ju had just so happened that I had enrolled in a summer course at Brown University, Rhode Island, where I intended to go and study positive psychology. Due to the circumstance, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to go. I didn't want to go, but my parents convinced me, and I went. I fell in love with what I learned there and what I heard, and I was lucky to find my passion. When I was on the course, I was introduced to this image, and it stuck with me. It got me thinking, what is happiness? What is this big H that everyone's so obsessed with? And I saw this image, and I thought, this can't be right. This wasn't good enough. I wasn't having it. Happiness at the age of 16 could not simply be just owning a driving license. And if it was, surely many more of us would be way happier. Surely it would be much easy, easier to wake up in the morning Surely depression, mental health illnesses wouldn't be happening if this is what happiness was, because we would all be able to reach the state so easily. I wasn't satisfied. So I had to research. I wanted answers. I wanted to know what happiness was. I knew there was more to it. And I read and I watched and I listened to many different resources about the big H. And I came across PERMA, or a Positive psychologists like to call it the wheel of well-being. And these are the foundations of my five secrets to happiness. Number one, positive emotions. It seems pretty obvious, right? Feeling joy, excitement, love, peace. Of course they're going to make you feel great. Of course they're going to make you happy. But it's not as simple as that. These positive emotions allow you to live an optimistic life. They allow you to enjoy things better. It reduces what positive psychologists call the negativity bias. This is an issue we are all guilty of facing. The negativity bias is basically the concept that we focus on the negative things in our life. We're too busy thinking of what went wrong, what we didn't do, what we couldn't do, what someone else did better, rather than what we did right. And I often find myself going to friends and moaning about what went wrong in the day rather than actually what went well. And the more we experience positive emotions, the more we are able to get rid of this negativity bias. And this is because we're able to be more optimistic. My second secret, engagement, or as some call it, flow. This is one of the secrets to happiness that I connect with the most. I often find myself in this state of flow or engagement when I'm working or at a concert or with friends, or watching a film. And this state of engagement or flow is basically being in the zone. It's being immersed in an activity. No one else, nothing else around you matter. This is what engagement is. And research has shown a high link between being in this state and personal growth. Because being in this state of flow allows you to reach your challenges. You're so engaged that you're able to motivate yourself. You're able to do things you didn't think you'd be able to do because you're not worried about anything. You're not worried about anything going wrong. You're not worried about what others are thinking. It's just you, that moment, and whatever you're doing. And that is the state of flow. That is engagement. And when you enter the state of flow, you're often doing a challenge. And when you reach that challenge and you achieve it, you feel good. And this enables you to feel a positive emotion. And the more positive emotions you feel, the more optimistic you are about life. My third secret. Relationships. For me, I say relationships are make or break. Having positive relationships in your life 
gives you a support network. We're human, we're social creatures, we're meant to interact with each other, we're meant to be intimate, we're meant to engage with each other, and this is what relationships allow us to do. It allows us to have someone to experience life with us. It allows us to do things with someone else, to share things with someone else. When planning this talk, I really started to think, what makes me happy? And what makes other people happy? So I decided to take this question to social media. And I asked my friends, what is happiness? What makes you happy? I only got 50 responses. But out of the 50, 35 people responded that friends or family made them happy. So surely this shows that positive relationships increase happiness. But why? Well, as I said, it allows you someone to ha share your experiences with. It gives you a support network. It allows you to connect to someone. But it also allows you to think of someone other than yourself. And this is also a key feature when thinking about what makes you happy. Often, when you do something good for someone else, you feel happy, you feel good, you know, you've helped someone. And when you have positive relationships with people, you're able to help people, you're able to give to someone else other than yourself, you're thinking of other people. All of a sudden, you care for someone just as much as yourself. Whether this is your parents, your kids, your family, your friends, your teacher, your students, it allows you to build relationships. And when you're out there and you're doing good for others, that allows you to enter a state of flow or engagement. When you're engaging in conversation, when you're going out with them, you enter the state and when you enter the state, you feel positive emotions. And the more positive emotions you feel, the more optimistic your view of life is. My fourth secret to happiness is meaning. This one often scares people. When you think of having a meaning, you think of a higher purpose. You think of doing something mega, changing the world. This is not what it means. Having a meaning can be as small as just going to school and talking to your friends. That could be your meaning. Or it could be as big as running a marathon. It doesn't have to be crazy big. It's more like a small personal goal. And meaning is tailored to everyone's individual self. I read a book last year called A Simple Act of Gratitude. And it was basically about a guy called John whose life was a mess. He just divorced his wife, he lost his house, his relationship with his kids was terrible, he was about to lose his job, and he had no money. But he set a goal to write small thank you notes every day to someone. And this was his meaning. His meaning was he wanted to be thankful for things, and he wanted to make people feel good. So he wrote these notes, and it ranged from milkmen to postmen to his ex-wife to his children. And he found that as he did these, not only was it giving him a positive goal to work towards of fixing his relationships and building new relationships, but it was also allowing him to get his life back on track. He had something to do, somewhere to turn, and this is what meaning in life does for us. It gives us a purpose, it gives us a sense of belonging, a place to go when we get lost. And sometimes it can result in building new relationships, in entering this state of flow, and these all create positive emotions, which are the foundations to happiness. My fifth and final secret, achievement. Again, it seems pretty obvious. Who doesn't like doing things right? Who doesn't like succeeding? Who doesn't like doing what they're meant to do? Of course it's gonna make you feel good. Again, on this survey, eight people responded that when they get verbal responses of something good they've done, they feel happy knowing that they've been appreciated. They kind of been approved. That makes them feel good makes them feel like they've achieved their goal. And this is why having a meaning is so important, because it allows you to reach achievement. And achievement allows you to feel good, to feel these positive emotions. And feeling these positive emotions allows you to have an optimistic view. And when you're facing achievement, you're building new relationships. People will congratulate you. People, there will always be people who won't want to congratulate you and who'd be jealous but there'll always be some who will be there for you, and that allows you to have stronger, positive relationships. We live in a world where we can easily kind of go on our phones, open an app, and we see hundreds of people achieving thousands of crazy things every day. And for a lot of people, this makes them feel really bad. Oh, that person got a new job. Oh, that person got a new house. Oh, they're making money. They're achieving big things. 
This is a real achievement. Real achievement is what it means to you. It can be small, it can be big. You decide. That's how you'll find happiness. This is pretty much one of my favorite quotes um, in positive psychology. Happiness is not the absence of problems. It's the ability to deal with them. And this relates back to my idea of karma. We may all have problems. We all do. But it's not the problems themselves that are stopping our happiness. It's us. It's our attitude. It's our state of mind. And if we're able to go and talk to those people we have positive relationships with, and we're able to enter these states of flow, maybe by exercising, and this is why mindfulness is massive these days, because it's helping people change their state of mind, enter the state of flow, feel the positive emotions from this state of flow, and this will help you be happy. Are these secrets perfect? No. There's still a long way to go, and there's still a lot of research to be done. And they're not quite simple enough yet. But there's no simple answer to happiness. And if I had it, this talk would be shorter, I wouldn't be standing here, and I'd probably be very rich. But I'll continue to research, and when I find a better answer, I'll let you know. Thank you for listening.